Now, it's been pretty much a year since I got the Sony FX30, when the time that they released this guy I had every intention of buying it and using it for things like stuff on this YouTube channel and using it for client projects as well. It also has some pretty decent features that help you out in cinematography and even doing a couple photos every now and again. I've kind of decided that this is one of the best cameras that you can get. And we'll talk about it. Now, I hope you guys can forgive the lav mic in the shot, but I did want to talk about my experience with the Sony FX30 after a year of use. Now, I don't want to go over the spec sheet because that's probably been done before, but I do want to talk about how this fits in my workflow and how I've been using it over the last 365 days. Now, in terms of how I use the Sony FX30 into my workflow is actually to be more of a supplement than it is a main camera. I do know there are some people that want to see short films on this guy, but because I have other cameras, it's just not me to do that. I use other cameras for different things. But this is a camera that I think is perfect as a YouTube setup or a social media content setup or even a B or a C cam to some of the other cameras that are available. Now, when I picked this guy up, I opted not to get the audio top handle. And the reason why I did that is because I have a main camera for my audio. But this camera is small, it's light, it's compact and has amazing image quality in order for you to get social content or even stuff for your clients. Now, if you are going to use this as an A camera, you might configure it a little bit differently. But in terms of getting a a second angle for some of your filmmaking projects or using this for your own personal content creation, I think this does more than a good job. On top of that, it also takes photos as well, which is something that people overlook on the Sony FX30. In fact, I've been using it for pretty much every thumbnail on this channel since the time that I got it. I actually don't own a dedicated photography camera anymore, and I'm actually borrowing the camera that I'm using right now to film this video. But I've been using the Sony FX30 for even getting photo jobs every now and again, and it's been able to hold up just fine. And it does do a lot of things incredibly well. Now, in terms of the design of the Sony FX30, it's made to be a poor man Sony FX3. And since the creator came out just a couple of days ago, it's something that everyone's gonna be talking about. They're gonna talk about the Sony FX3 being the camera to shoot a Hollywood movie. And this has a lot of the same capabilities outside of the fact that it is an APS-C type sensor. And with APS-C and stuff like that as well, some people do have some problems with the sensor size. Most people say it's not great in low light or you're not gonna get quite the image quality or the depth of field is going to suffer. But this also, uses a 6K downsampled image, so not only are you going to get more sharpness, but at the same time, it's still recording 10-bit in S-Log3. In fact, I've compared this camera in terms of its color matching to the Sony Venice, and when I was actually doing that video inside of a rental house while a commercial was going on, no one was able to really tell the difference outside of the crop factor. The color and all the image quality looked very much on par with some of the other more expensive cameras. Now, in terms of the image quality coming out of the Sony FX30, I've almost never had a problem with it. The 10 color that comes out of it looks amazing. It has a better updated color science from some of the other Sony cameras. You're able to use things like your cinema tools like Cine EI, which actually helps me out a lot with getting proper exposure, and it grades really well while using S-Log3, and if you want to use S-Cinetone, you can do that as well. I've never really had a problem or ever really had a client say the image quality isn't as good on the Sony FX30, and I've been using this in a variety of different contexts. I've made my own social media content with reels and things like that. I've, I've also used this when I'm working with some of my fitness clients and I need a small camera to do the job. And more often than not, they think the image looks as good as ever, but I'm using a much cheaper camera that's much smaller and it's a lot more compact. You also still get a lot of the same features internally in the menu system on the FX30 as some of the other expensive cameras. You get the quick menu borrowed from the Sony FX3 and you also get focus breathing compensation, which still gets on people that own the Sony A7S III's nerves. I'm sorry but you still get a lot of those things that are comforting and a lot of those things that are useful in this camera, even though it costs a lot less money. Now, in terms of the learning curve on the Sony FX30, this is a camera that I could recommend to people just starting out into filmmaking or people that want to make their own content, but they need a camera that has a lot of power in it. In terms of the learning curve on the Sony FX30, it's actually a pretty easy to use camera. With the new menu setup and everything like that, it's incredibly easy to use. And if you're using any Sony camera before, it's incredibly familiar, especially if you're using anything recent. Another thing that is kind of underrated, but people don't realize is that this is also a really powerful tool if you're someone that does live streams on Twitch 
Culture War on YouTube or any other platform that does live streaming. All you need is a USB-C cable, you connect it directly into your computer, and even if you want to put an audio source on your FX30, it works as the audio source in that streaming platform. I actually did a shoot with DeAndre Hopkins while he's in Toronto, and the Sony FX30 was the only camera that was able to do the job. And the quality was great, and it actually saved me on that shoot, and it came from that webcam utility that's on the camera. But everything else in terms of learning how to use it, learning how to color grade on it is honestly just the same as anything else. If you've seen any S-Log3 color grading video or how to expose for S-Log3 or how to use any Sony camera that's made recently, you probably know already how to use a Sony FX30. So there's not a lot of learning curve and it's not something to be afraid of. And if you're someone coming from a different system, well, there's a ton of videos on this channel that you can watch in order to learn how to use a Sony FX3 or other cameras. But for the most part, the learning curve is incredibly easy. Now, one of the things on the Sony FX30 that might be a knock that some people have opinions on is the fact that it is an APS-C crop sensor. And to be honest, I don't actually have a problem with that. I've recently switched over to the Red Komodo X, which is a Super 35 sensor, which isn't full frame either. And what I have to say about Super 35 or crop sensor video is that it's just as good as most other things in a lot of situations. Now, are you gonna lose maybe a little bit of depth of field and light gathering? perhaps. However, you can just opt for faster lenses that are ultimately going to be cheaper than something that's going to be full frame. You could also opt to get something like speed boosters for APS-C or crop sensor sensors if full frame is something that you really, really, really want, which to be honest, isn't the end of the world by not having, and I actually don't miss it too much. Now, there is something to be said about the fact that its dual base ISO is going to be a bit different at 800 and 2500 versus the 12,800 on the FX3, the FX6, or any camera that's going to have that sensor. I'm gonna say two things with that. One, do you really need 12,800 ISO? Seriously, think about it. If you're somebody that's going to be in that realm, then obviously this isn't going to be the camera for you. But I'd be hard pressed to actually think that people genuinely need 12,800 ISO on a regular basis. But in terms of low light, the Sony FX30 still holds up decently. Now, one recommendation I would say is just light your scenes whenever you can. You do have the dual base at 2,500 if you go up a little bit, but it's not gonna be the best in low light. In fact, I compared all the latest Sony cameras in terms of their low light capabilities, but it's something that 95% of the time it's not something that I'm kicking myself for not having. Most of the times I'm lighting up my own set or I have control over my destiny in terms of the shots that I'm getting. And if I'm in a situation where I don't use that, then I'm just going to rent another camera. But for the money that you're gonna be saving on a $1,700 camera, I think it's a steal for what it actually can do. Now, in my specific workflow, this is gonna be the ultimate B or a C camera. If you're already an owner of the Sony FX3, then this thing is a great pickup. If you own the FX6, I could actually say the same thing. In fact, any 10-bit or higher camera that can use S-Log3, the Sony FX30 is a great pickup for an amazing price. Now, one thing I really do like is going to be the modularity of the Sony FX30. It's incredibly small, which means that you could rig it up, you can gimbal it up, you could put it in a variety of different situations, and unlike my FX6, you can still use audio. What's cool about modern-day cameras nowadays is how small they actually can be with how much power that they have. And one of the concerns with a lot of Sony cameras coming out was the overheating, but because this has an internal fan, you don't have to worry about that too much. Now, overall, I do think Greg Frazier did a lot of people a solid. Because the creator came out just a couple of days ago on an $80 million budget, they used the Sony FX3 to shoot that, and it looks amazing. And what's cool about that is that whenever you bring your Sony FX30 on set, because they're almost indistinguishable, you could just tell your clients that it's the same camera they shot with the creator with. And that's not necessarily a lie in particular, it's just a crop version of it. You could be as honest or dishonest as you want, but the fact that now we could associate a Hollywood movie with a smaller camera actually gives more credence to the FX30 as a viable camera because from an image quality standpoint, it's not that far off. And it still can record an external RAW via Atomos Ninja 5 recorder, so you do have all of those things that are available to you, and you're still gonna get great quality out of this guy, even if your clients don't ask you what camera you're shooting on, which also is something that happens sometimes, but just not all the time and not for everybody. Now, I would be a liar if I said I've never been asked by a client as to which camera I'm shooting on, or that was never a factor within a shoot. I've been asked before, and sometimes when I bring the wrong camera or too small of a camera, I've, I've been called out on it before. Now, that's not everybody's experience, but I will say the vast majority of jobs you're gonna be on, they more care about the end result and not necessarily the 
the tool that you're going to be using. And at the end of the day, for everything the Sony FX30 is, it's definitely going to make you money. I picked up this camera the very second that it was released because I thought it'd be a great pickup and it's a great cheap option to have a lot of high quality. And at the end of the day, this camera is going to make you money in one way or another. It's gonna make you money if you're gonna be a content creator here on YouTube and make money through brand deals or AdSense or whatever the case might be. And if you wanna use this camera for client work, it's definitely gonna make its money back. In fact, I actually did a whole video on how to rig up your camera for different jobs with the Sony FX30, and you might want to take a look at that to see what things you might want to get in order to do different jobs. The Sony FX30 is one of my favorite cameras, and it's one of the best I've used for a variety of different reasons. However, it's not the perfect camera. For one, I'm talking from two sides of my mouth here with the dual base ISO. It does have 800 and 2500, and it's not the worst in the world. It actually looks pretty decent, but I would have loved if it was like 4000 or something, so it actually gets a little bit of a boost in low light. Now, I have shot in low light with this camera before and it's not a big deal, but I feel like if they can get to 12,800 on the FX3, I don't know, like meet us halfway a little bit better on the 4000 ISO on the FX30. Now, I try to avoid sounding like a spec sheet, but there is one spec that I'm not too crazy about, and it's the 120 frames a second in 4K. Now, it's great, it shoots 120 frames a second. That's awesome, a lot of cameras can't do that. But it does crop more into the sensor that's already cropped, so it doesn't look the best all the time. In fact, I don't think I've actually used 120 frames a second almost the entire time that I've had this camera. And to be truthful about 120 frames a second in 4K, 1080, or 8K is, I kind of don't care about it that much. I feel like over the course of my filmmaking career, I've started to grow out of using everything in slow motion. Now, some people might really need it, and I understand that, but you want to pick the right camera for the right job. And if you want a really crisp 4K 120 frames a second, that, that might not be the guy. This one is a gigantic complaint, and I understand why people are annoyed, but at the same time, it's not the worst thing in the world, which is also going to start some controversy, but it's it's shutter angle and some of the other tools that you would find in other cinema cameras. Now, the Sony FX30 is part of the FX cinema line, and with that comes some expectations. Now, I can understand not putting things like false color in the camera because you're more than likely going to have it on a monitor anyways. I understand some of those tools not being there. However, shutter angle. You could just put a math equation into the menu system and have shutter angle there and you could toggle it on and off depending on whatever you feel like. In fact, I haven't really said this much, but I'm shooting this on the Panasonic S5 Mark II and it has shutter angle right at the bottom of the screen. I'm at 180 degree shutter. Now, I feel like that's just a simple math equation. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but I feel like at some point Sony's just laughing at us at the idea that we want shutter angle in some of these cameras and they're just not giving it to us in either a firmware update or in a new camera of this size. At this point, I kind of just laugh at it. I kind of think it's funny, but at the same time, can we have it please? It would, it would just be great. I think you would make so many people happy if we had shutter angle, but again, this is me who's not affiliated with Sony at back capacity at all. And I'm just hoping that you get the same things that I want as well and vice versa. Now, at the end of the day, do I recommend the Sony FX30? And I feel like I was a little bit wrong about this. Before, I used to recommend this only for beginners or people just starting out into filmmaking, but I actually think this is a camera that might just be for everybody. I don't think Super 35 crop sensor is dead. It has a ton of capabilities, and with the Sony FX30 having a lot of the same comforts that you have from the Sony FX3, and that camera being used for bigger things, you do get a lot out of this camera body at half the price of getting that FX3. You're still going to get a lot of things that you love about the Sony FX3 and even stuff that I miss about my Sony FX6 between the color science, the dynamic range, it's pretty decent in low light and I think that's one of the things that whether you're a beginner or somebody that's more pro, a camera that's easy to use, that's flexible and it's powerful is always going to go a long way. Now, as I land the plane here and I talk about my final thoughts, I definitely recommend this camera for pretty much anybody. I've used it as a B cam, I've used it as a social media camera, and it holds up just fine. In fact, I've compared it to more expensive cameras and it does just great. And now, if you guys want to check out this camera or you want to check out some of the videos I've made on the Sony FX30, links are obviously in the description down below, but I think I'm going to add the playlist of every video that I've made using the Sony FX30 right over here. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh,